Alright, what is going on guys, and welcome to my Valheim Survival series that I spent the last 500 days playing on. Um, it all started right here as spawn. Obviously when I dropped in here there were no boss trophies, but now I got four of them. But anyways, this was the start of my journey and addiction to Valheim. Uh, previously, I had heard a lot of good things about this game, and so I decided to give it a try. And so, yeah, I bought the game and uh, started playing. Since then, I've spent 500 days playing, and uh, I will try my best to show you guys my my base. But I want to give you guys a bit of a story as to what happened here. So, yeah, I spawn in right here, and uh, immediately started exploring. I was brand new to the game, I had no idea what was going on. Everything was brand new to me. I had no idea how challenging this game was going to be, but nonetheless, I decided I was going to give it a try and uh, yeah, just try to survive and uh, build. I was really looking forward to the building aspect of the game, and so yeah, I started building, and this is my starter base. Now, I didn't start like this. It was just the starter base was just this little square, rudimentary looking little building right here at first. Um, and then eventually I expanded it to have this dock that has since been destroyed by trolls. But yeah, I expanded it to have this little dock here. And yeah, this was this was challenging to build because I did not know really how to build in the water. And this game is not like Minecraft. You cannot just have floating builds. And so I had to learn how to build in the water and eventually I did. And at one point I had chests lining this entire wall as my storage system, my early game storage system. But like I mentioned, it got destroyed by a troll raid eventually. Um, but yeah, this was my starter base right here. I have my crafting area, I had a storage in here for my treasure chests. And also I had a little patio that I turned into a portal uh, room, which I actually have one more portal left for my wolf breeder. That takes me all the way up there for a, a functional wolf breeder. Um, but yeah, this was my starter base. And then eventually I expanded to include a farm and also made this a very expensive log cabin. I say expensive because every single log I had to go chop and uh, it takes two core wood to put in one of these, I believe. And uh, yeah, I, <laughs> it took a lot of wood to make this build, but this was my forge and the smelter area. Oh, I actually want to take this knife. I can use it to decorate somewhere else. Also, these item stands. Some fine wood. I'll harvest some of my old stuff and recycle it for later. But yeah, I really tried my best to decorate as best as I could. I utilized um, concepts I've seen from other people. So I added these windows, custom window sills with some uh, glowing mushrooms and also put a mug on there just for looks. But this is obviously empty now because I have moved on. So this was version one of my starter base. And then after that, I decided, you know what? I'm so done with raids. I want to try to see if I can uh, have a work around that. And I saw people building in the trees and building on islands. And the idea behind that I had was, you know, if I built on an island, trolls, won't, trolls and other mobs won't be able to reach me. So if I just did that, then, you know, I'll be safe. And well, that was the idea at least. Uh, but anyways, I didn't know what was gonna happen. So I went ahead and I started building I first planted a row or a circle Really tight circle of pine trees. You can see some of it still left standing here um, But you can also see that a big chunk of it is missing because well uh, We got raided. But anyways, that was the idea going into this build So I first planted a row uh, a circle. I keep saying row. I don't know why I keep saying row I first planted a circle of pine trees and that was going to be my foundation because in this game you cannot have floating things however trees act as a foundational support so if I just go ahead and uh, include or make a row or a ring of trees I can then build my supports off of that as you can see above it's kind of dark getting dark now uh, but um, you can kind of see above that I have support beams reaching out to support all the wood pieces that I have on top. And then eventually I even built in the middle of the circle to have a bunch of smelters here. Now I have no way to get back up there because uh, yeah, everything got destroyed. But you can just see from outside 
I was going for a quite ambitious starting um, base treehouse. It was it was it was going great until it didn't. When one day, five minutes, just five minutes after I finished building this base, and I logged off. The next day I come on, so it was like five in game minutes. Next day I logged on to play, and I was immediately greeted by a troll raid. It, it had the ground is shaking event, and two trolls spawned. And I thought, you know, I'll be safe, so I'll just leave them and uh, go go do my own business. And just wait for the tro for the uh, event to be over. But little did I know, trolls can swim. Or at the very least, I did not make this area deep enough. Did not make it wide, far away enough from any land that they can walk on. So, <laughs> they just walked up here. Like, they were like neck deep. Or not neck deep, but they were like waist deep in the water. And they just started smacking my build. They destroyed all these trees on this side. And so that let the left the uh, buildings unsupported. And so those crumbled. And uh, so yeah, five minutes after spending, I'd say, oh man, probably 10 in like real life hours, maybe even more um, building that tree house because it was quite difficult to build in the air. You have to, you have to try to, um, first of all, get everything anchored to the trees so that they don't, they don't end up getting collapsed. And second of all, uh, it was hard to put down scaffolding so that I can actually have a safe spot to you know walk on why am i getting stuck so it took it took me quite a long time to build that and then five minutes after finishing i was so happy after finishing it i was like oh my god this is gonna look really cool it was so cozy and quaint and then we got hit by the trolls and uh, that left me with no choice but to restart because i knew eventually i was gonna have to uh branch out and make a real start a real base because i know there was a lot more in the game than just what my little treehouse could handle um but <laughs> it, it forced me to move a lot sooner than i was hoping to and so that leads me to the base that i'm currently at now since then i had learned that you can actually change the settings in your game to not allow raids and also a bunch of other quality of uh, life settings to help with just not having to spend as much time grinding so I turned off raids, I turned off losing all gear on death, and I turned off um, disable or I disabled the thing that does not allow you to teleport expensive ore materials that you spend a lot of time mining, just so I can, you know, have an easier time. And so that leads us to here. I'm going to take a nap, that way we can actually see. But before I take a nap, you can kind of just get a vibe of this whole area. And do a quick spinning around. So, I took a nap. Here, we are in my actual starting house. Or my, yeah, my starting house. I'm going to put some wood on there so we can have light. Um, yeah, this was my starting house. I took a lot of time building this and tried my best to decorate it as best as I could. I even went to the trouble of going to defeat the boss, the first boss again, so I can hang his trophy up top. Oh, we're being attacked. I think that really added a nice touch to the roof because all the little antlers they just they just add a nice fine detail compared to the rest of the things that look very blocky um, so I'm quite happy with that but yeah this is my starter base uh, before I built a storage room this was my storage room right here and I'm, I think I'm going to leave this here for now or yeah just because it adds a nice touch to the building it makes the walls not look so flat so I think I'm going to leave that there and around the front I have a bunch of uh, flowers growing here. These are just plant these are just carrots and turnips and uh, onion flowers. Um, I think they look really nice to decorate my the my front of the house. But yeah, inside the house I went to the trouble of trying to stuff. My entire crafting stations here. And the way I did that was I actually, I, oh, I, I actually can't do that because I don't have the stone cutter here. But underneath the floor, I had dug out a huge, or not huge, but I had dug out an area where I'm able to stuff some of the annoying craft, thing, craft bench improvement things or workbench improvement things. So it doesn't clutter up the whole area here. And then I have my kitchen over here, which I had recently just moved, the, the kitchen cooking stuff. But here, I'll, I still have my 
dining table, my first dining table, just here with some nice food on it. I even put a potion on the windowsill to add a nice little bit of glow. My bedroom here right now is at comfort level 13, which is I think as high as I can go at this level, of the, this stage of the game. Decorated as best as I could, even have a brazier on top. Um, and some uh, iron reinforced chest and some just chairs and uh, item stand with my armor, old armor. That's just that's my bronze armor. I haven't worn that thing in quite some time. But yeah, this is the first floor of my starter base, and then up top here I have an attic that I use. Have a bunch of fermenters up here on this station that I recently moved as well. Actually, I moved that today because I went ahead and I expanded my build a lot more. But we're not done with the starting area yet. Starting area, I also went ahead and I made a bunch of farms to um, hold all the crops here. It is very wet and rainy. I'm gonna wait the rain away. Okay, so the rain has stopped. Now I can probably show you guys the, the farms I have here. I built these two farms for the beginning crops I can get in the forest and in the swamps. Got my turnip fields here. <laughs> I try my best to plant them as straight as possible without using any mods. Uh, I think I did a pretty decent job, but obviously I had to eyeball things and try to measure things up by just by eye, <laughs> as eyeballing. But yeah, this is this is as best as I could in terms of keeping everything straight. Uh, built a nice little path here and fenced off everything, so hopefully mobs don't come here and attack it. I actually had a lot of trouble when I first got my turnips because I wasn't quite familiar with the mob proofing in this game. Uh, but you can mob proof their spawns by, or you can block their spawns by just adding a workstation here. And uh, But I did not know that how much it would block and so I actually lost all my crops in the beginning minus three seeds uh, for my turnips until I figured out that oh I had a little corner here that I wasn't mob proofing. And so, after I found that out, I just stuffed a workbench there, and uh, my crops have been safe ever since then. But yeah, I had a lot of trouble with that in the beginning, which was very frustrating. Here on top here, I kind of wanted to make this whole area with uh, have elevation changes, because if everything is just flat, it looks kind of boring. And so I wanted to do my best to give elevation changes to all of this. And so that's what I did. I added a nice little spot right here with a fir tree. And then from the fir tree, I dangled, I dangled a nice little basket here, as you can see. That is uh, supposed to be kind of like an outreaching attachment of the tree, kind of like a tree house, but it's like a hang basket from the tree. That's the vibe I was going for. And then I just have this ladder tucked away so I can actually get up there to harvest my honey. So this is my bee, this is my honey farm right here. Very low key and quaint, but also adds a nice touch to the whole area as a whole. And then just jump down. Over here is one of the most useless in terms of functional builds. But I think this turned out pretty nice. This is a just a nice little area with an oak tree that I made, kind of like a mini park with a log that you can sit on and just look out into the ocean. The idea for this whole area is I wanted to go for a um, harbor, like island hopping village experience. That's what I was going for. So we have a lot of islands that are connected by bridges and separated by water. And so I wanted this whole area here to be you know, like, like a nice peaceful spot that you can sit and watch the ships sail in. Obviously there are no ships out in the water right now. I didn't put them there yet. But the whole idea is you can sit there and enjoy watching ships sail into the harbor and then also get a decent uh, look at the harbor itself. Which eventually I'll be filling out as best as I could as, uh, as I build this world. Then next, this was probably one of my most expensive builds to date. Because, like I mentioned before in the video, this game does not allow for floating builds. So everything needs to be anchored and different materials have different um, strengths. And so if you build something without giving a good, using good materials to strengthen it, what will end up happening is your build will just start collapsing. And the, the only material that allows you to have good strength right now in my level of progression in a game are steel or iron. And uh, so 
yeah, all these posts that I've covered with stone, including all the support structure on top, is made out of steel encased uh, beams, and those took a lot of iron. Like I'm talking, I spent probably a whole chest full of iron just to build this build, just to build this bridge. But I really wanted this bridge here because I wanted this bridge to be the entrance, the gateway to my harbor city. And funny enough, actually, after I built this bridge, I realized that the bridge is too low and boats can't actually pass through because their sails, their masts actually hit the top of the, or hit the bottom of the bridge. So, uh, yeah, that's that. That kind of backfired a little bit. But the idea is still the same, is I wanted a entrance, like a gateway into the harbor city. And, uh, you know, just... To complete the look really just that's what I was going for and so yeah most expensive most time comes to being built but here I have two watchtowers with custom braziers on top that are using campfires to be a never well not a never any but a resistant rain resistant fire or light source that is supposed to be like lighthouses and then the fingers and the hand on top that I took a, a inspiration from I believe this creator called Ghost Builds. You, you guys can look him up on YouTube. He makes some really good and interesting builds. But yeah, on the inside it's pretty empty. I, I feel like I could probably decorate the walls of the tower itself a little better, but for now that's what I got. Now here's the bridge itself. Yeah, I got these diamond shaped um, little sections just to kind of decorate. I have little outstretched beams just to kind of give the give the uh, railings a little bit more depth because without depth everything is just flat and I don't I don't want my things to just look boring and flat so yeah I try my best to decorate as best as I could on this bridge I think it turned out okay I definitely learned a lot and uh, have found a lot of areas I could improve on in the future for my builds but for now with my skill level with what I've got I think it looked okay and perfect timing actually, sun is just setting now to transition to this area of my build, which is the newest area of my builds. Um, this right here is my newest section, so I will come back to that at the end. But next, after I finish building the bridge, I spend a bit of time just kind of harvesting and gathering materials and just kind of exploring the game and leveling up a bit. As you guys can see, I actually have the black metal axe now. Um, but yeah, so I kind of ran out of steam with my building ideas, so I decided I'll just uh, play the survival aspect of the game. And uh, after I kind of regained my, not confidence, but regained my creativity, I then built this build, which is my dock house slash storage center. Um, the idea behind this one is so the boats would sail into the harbor from there. Obviously, I just told you guys it doesn't actually fit. but. The idea is that you imagine the boat sail in here and then it can come here with this nice curve that allows you to kind of be guided into the dock house with, <laughs> I got a serpent head um, hanging on there. It's my only one, it's my trophy. But yeah, you sail in here and then you can park. And right here I got the medium sized boat in the game. This is the car. I believe I could fit the long ship in here as well, but I don't want to waste the materials just to have something as a prop. So I just put the car in here. And then here, as you land, the idea is so you sail into the harbor, you park, and then you have all this cargo that you will then unload from the ship's storage. And then you can easily and quickly put them into organized chests along this wall. And uh, you can see some of them are labeled, some of them are still empty. The ones that are not labeled are empty for future um, exploration and uh, stuff that I would get from those areas. And then, um, there are some that are labeled that are filled with stuff that I do have. So I got some bones here. I got my ores here. I got a. I went. I went and did a lot of mining, but I spent a lot also. But I got a lot of iron, and over here I got wood. I've spent a lot of wood as well. I only got two stacks left, um, and then tucked in between these cubicles, if you would call them cubicles, I have little torches hidden behind them. That's provides a nice little backlit glow to things um, to light up this whole area because when I first finished building this area this was dark as hell I could not see anything uh, but now there's some light here and then here underneath here these little windowsills I tucked some wards 
which are the infinite life sources because these ward, wards, when you activate them, they glow like this. So I just tucked a few of them under, underneath there to create a nice little hidden slash more modern style looking um, light sources. But yeah, this is what my storage house looks like. I have a second floor to this, um, which I have not really filled out yet, but this is some this is a nice touch that I added to the roofs. Is I use some glowy mushrooms on item stand to create this nice like LED strip light effects that I'm quite happy with. Uh, but like I said, this whole area I haven't really filled out and decorated. I just made a railing and then I did try to make like a modern like propane fire pit looking build right here with a nice custom chair. Uh, but other than that, the second floor I haven't really uh, decorated much. You can see on top I added some chimneys just to, well they're not meant to be chimneys but they're just there to kind of allow light in. After that, I I got I got lost a little bit again. I didn't have any ideas, so instead I went and I just kind of made this pathway um, along the waterfront. I really like how this turned out. I stuffed a bunch of campfires on top of here to create these uh, kind of braziers looking vibe. However, being that they are campfires, they're a lot cheaper first of all, which is why I'm I'm able to have so many of them, and compared to using actual braziers. But when it rains, this all gets put out. So that is one downside to everything. But yeah, this is the nighttime vibe of my city. My little harbor village island hopping city. I'm going to sleep the night away so I can continue to give you guys a tour. So it is now morning. The, the sunrise. The, the one thing I really love about this game is the lighting in this game. It just looks so good. The graphics quality on this game itself is not that amazing in terms of like textures or character details or stuff like that. But the lighting, the, that's what drew me to the game is just how insanely good the lighting in this game just looks. It looks so real, the shadows look so good. Um, so that's, that's why I really like this game. But yeah, next up I built this little bridge to and also widen up this water passageway to just really enhance and add to the whole island hopping uh, experience or the vibe of things. And then I went to the trouble. So I first opened up this river to make it unpat or seem more wide and impassable. And then I custom built this stone bridge with a custom arch that took me a lot of stone and time to build. Because in this game, like I said, you need proper support. So I had to first build the proper supports and then build a proper arch to then stack a lot of stone on there and then I built the top of the bridge or the walkway. That then leads to this custom um, pathway into this little forest encampment. Now I first had to plant a, a circle of trees here to really give it that uh, forest encampment look and then I went through and I actually then uh, split this into sections which is supposed to house all my smelting needs. So here I have my uh, kilns. These kilns smelt into charcoal or smelt wood into charcoal, as you can see me doing right now. And then I have this section for my um, normal uh, ore smelters. Then the next section, you see some ore floating around that has been finished processing. I have this area for my uh, higher tier materials. Actually, something destroyed my something destroyed my. I need to come fix this later on. But yeah, so this is my smelting area. I have an oak tree in the middle to serve as like kind of like this tiny city's center. I suppose if you call it that. But yeah, these look really nice. I love the glow of the fire on the trees and the branches and all of that. But yeah, this is my smelting area. Next, I decided to work on um, my farms a little bit. Because I wanted to give you guys this tour, I decided that I was going to spend some time to really populate my farms. Because I had made this huge farm for all my onions. And so I, need, I wanted to be able to fill it out. So I spent a bunch of time just growing, planting, harvesting, replanting, harvesting again to now where I have this entire garden filled with onions. Uh, but yeah, 
This is going to be enough stamina food for me to last for days, let me tell you that. This is, this is a lot of onions right here. But yeah, that was the next build that I built. I just uh, carved out a piece of land here and tried to make it a tiered level, like I mentioned in the other area. I wanted to add some verticality to my build so it's not so flat. So that's what I did here. It's kind of like a throne, like a mountain tea village kind of vibe to this build right here. It's not really a build per se, but just, you know, this, this adds to my entire village here. And then last but not least, this is what I got finished building today. This is my new updated um, dining hall. And actually, I, I, I remember to close the door before. I typically don't bother opening and closing doors. I open them once and then I just leave them be. But yeah, this is my dining hall. Right here, I tried my best to make it look uh, as good as I could. I actually took inspiration from another uh, Valheim player, uh, but his dining hall was a lot bigger and looked a lot different than mine. I just, I just, took inspiration from the fact that he used a lot of glass and this um, trying really sharp, steep angle design. I really liked his design and so uh, I, yeah, like I said, I took inspiration from it. Outside here, I have a bunch of windmills to process the barley into flour. Um, I didn't initially place them here because I just didn't think about it. But after I finished the build, I realized like there's this empty space here. And that kind of just makes it look very uh, out of place. So I added some windmills here to process barley into flour. And that also nicely filled up some of this space besides this dining hall. But entering into the dining hall, I have this custom built table. This is not actually a table the game has. Um, I custom place all these pieces to have this rounded corner here. Um, and then I attach item frames here so that I can put some food here. This guy has a whole fish to eat. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's the dining table. This is the dining hall. I still need to work on adding some good lighting in here. But on this side, I have some fermenters with uh, these item or these armor stands. The idea that I had was I wanted to have these item stands here sitting here kind of giving the vibe of it being like a bunch of butlers sitting here ready to serve the guests in the Viking dining hall here. I'm not, like I said, I'm not done with this whole area yet, but that's kind of the vibe I'm going for. Uh, these fermenters are like for wine. Well, in the game, they're meant for brewing potions, but here in this dining hall, I kind of use them to portray like wine barrels. So you guys can see how big those barrels are. Like my guests are gonna get absolutely sloshed as they as they come here and dot wine and dine with me. Here I have chests to store finished cooked foods and potions. And then on this side is the cold cooking area. So I have two hearths here, one for the cauldron, one for just uh, cooking regular meats. I have all my um, cooking enhancement, like workbench and enhancement items here. Um, I tried to organize them as best as I could. I have this little crate that you can actually do by filling your carts with items and they will then spawn those crates and barrels on the carts and after you destroy the cart then those barrels pop out and uh, you can then use those barrels as additional storage and also decoration. On the wall here, I have a bunch of um, weapons that I use to act as cooking utensils. So I have this mace here that I am imagining it to be like a meat softener, like a meat mallet that you use in the kitchen. I have a cleaver, and then I have an actual like fillet knife here. And then along the walls here, I have different stores. So on this side of the kitchen, I have more of the plant-based um, materials. On this side of the kitchen, I have more of the animal-based materials, uh, as you can see. Wait, well, I, there we go. So yeah, these are the raw meats from, you know, my hunting, and uh, or so later on I'll be building animal farms. At the end here, I have two ovens to bake the new flour-based foods that I can get from barley flour that the windmills outside produce. But yeah, this is about it for my build. So far, it's kind of hard to believe that I spent 500 in-game days and honestly, probably, I haven't checked this in a while yet, but the last time I checked my game time play hours, I was at like day 280 something, and on Steam it says I have like 130 some hours, so I'm sure I'm like way over 
way over 200 real live hours now. But in game, I'm at day 500 ish, I believe. I believe um, at after my last nap to sleep the night away that you guys saw, that I th I believe that was day 500. But yeah, there's like. <laughs> It's kind of hard to believe that it actually took this long to build, but I really tried to pour my heart and soul into these builds because I want to just express my creativity and make things look as nice as possible because I really enjoy just having nice, uh, nice builds to look at myself as I, uh, as I play this game. And so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, if you guys have any suggestions or tips and tricks for me to enhance my builds, I will be more than happy and grateful to hear them. So feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. But for now, take care. Peace.